Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Geeks by Gaslight podcast, the show you know what to do for your monthly insight into the many wide of geek culture. I'm your host, Carol Ishi, and joining me are two spectacular guests. First, please welcome the former host of GBG, Mr. Ronnie Diaz. Hello, I'm here. And the writer of Comic Critical, comics blogger, Dre Best. Here for my uh, 100th appearance? <laughs> It's getting there. It's like episode 10 million for Dre. Um, trust, trust me, if you feel like you've been on the show a shitload, I, I'm i dead inside emotionally. <laughs> this is just, it drains me every I day. That was prior to you doing this. Oh, well, that too. Um, every day I wake up and the burden of GBG hurts my soul. Um, but, uh, no, maybe. Um,. No, um, so Comic Con was this uh, was this month. We did a shitload of things for it. <laughs> um, Comic Con was really this month. I couldn't tell by the fucking gridlock that it had on our city. My God, yeah. Um, <laughs> we we uh, GBG is based out of San Diego, um, and so uh, we have easy access to Comic Con. We have yeah, we have easy access to Comic Con, and we were able to do a whole sort of like. Uh, we we basically made a new show out of it, GBG on the street, where we just kind of went down and interviewed cosplayers and you know shot footage and you know we didn't get to go inside much. Uh, Man, if only we bit. had like I don't know a vlog in which we did this. Hint hint nudge nudge. It's literally the next video on the list. Um, you know, yeah. Descending. I mean, yeah. It's it, it'll it'll be linked. It'll be linked along with the special anniversary that we uh, that we just did for GBG uh, hitting hitting one year old. So proud. Um, it was a busy month for us. So, uh, yeah, uh, what was you? What was your guys' favorite part about being at the con physically? Uh, well, um, you know, I uh, famous uh, curmu- curmudgeon that I am. I actually, I, I do really just enjoy the the pe- the people watching. Even though there's far too many human beings in one city on Comic Con weekend, the, it, it's all. Oh, it's always like fun to see stuff. It's always great to hear like the, the little whispers of like like conversations. I I just kind of enjoyed like oh, people watching the. It didn't feel as uh, unmanageable. What Comic Con last few years has been really has felt congested to the point where it's like miserable. Um, but this time it, it felt uh, it felt just a little a little bit better managed and like there was a lot more like. Space. I, yeah, it was, yeah, it, 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 because it, because it wasn't just like so jam packed with you know people, and even though it was, it was you know it was at least better managed. If the con felt a bit more lively this year, it's probably um, because it was a slightly smaller con in terms of stuff happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like I think in terms of like announcements, and stuff, probably one of the it's probably one of the weaker uh, comic cons I've seen, uh, mainly because there was one. Big, big, big uh, announcement that I'm sure you guys know about. But um, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed the. Uh, I really enjoyed some of like the outside the con events. Particularly, uh, uh, we weren't able to get in for it, but we did manage to film and be right outside for the um, the breaking of the Kamehameha uh, world record uh, with Sean Shemmel there. That was super fun. Um, it was, but I just like to say that was horribly managed. Oh my god! Oh my god! Literally, okay, we were standing in line for like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, maybe two forty-five. Hours. It would, no, like oh. that, yeah, two hours, but like maybe for like forty-five minutes, like after it had already happened, waiting to just get in there to like go and talk to people, hopefully get some interviews, and just like look around and see all like the cool Dragon Ball figures, maybe play the new Dragon Ball Z Kakarot game, but um. Uh, but they cut the line off, um, about, they didn't tell us. yeah, they cut the line off about six people ahead of us and didn't tell anyone in line, which was well over a hundred people. Um, so yeah, fuck you, Dragon Ball Comic-Con staff, but, um, no, I mean, I still had a good time. Um, there was a ton of, there was a ton of stuff. Ronnie, what did you enjoy? Oh, uh, I enjoyed the con culture. That was like really cool to see. Uh, I actually managed to get inside for Comic-Con. Um, and just as you guys, like, were talking about with how, uh, small, or not small this Comic-Con is, but how, like, lacking it was, and, mm-hmm. like, how, we, like, how better managed it was, but, like, weirdly, 
like lesser it was than the uh, previous one. Yeah. Going inside, y'all couldn't see it because um, we did get B-roll, but we didn't get like full wraparounds of like each uh, booth. Um, each booth was a lot smaller than previous years. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it, they weren't like they weren't like dramatically reduced. I'd say. So if last year, uh, so last year they, uh, how do, how do I put it? Um, I'd say they were about only 60% as, as big as they would normally be, okay. which for, I'll use the Capcom booth for reference, right? The Capcom booth would have demos for the new games, a place for signing and like a whole ass store that you could like purchase stuff from. Right. Mm-hmm. They consolidated the area for the demo and the signing by like having it basically just be a wall separating the demo and the signing and like next to the demos it was like uh a just it was it was a decently sized statue of a palico right like one not one one but like big enough to be at least human size so like a maybe five foot statue right and then uh rather than a store they just had like a booth with not even a booth it was like where Just the like line, table. not even a table actually. It was a stand, right? A stand with four tablets that connected <laughs> you to their Capcom store. Oh, <laughs> Online That's... Capcom store. Gee, and thanks, guys. If, so if I were to if I were to put it like this, they basically every booth had a box that they could be in, right? They just had to, like, make use of that, like, box area, whereas in other, um, in, in like, previous years, they were, didn't really have, like, a set formation. There would be some weirdly shaped booths. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, and uh, I talked to Guthrie about this, and he was like, they didn't build out, they built up. And there were a lot more, I wouldn't say vertically layered, but any of, like, the cool stuff was tall right instead of taking up floor space i remember that was a big problem of mine yeah yeah it was it was a lot like more controlled i guess which was easier to maneuver around and made like inside not torture but it was just like a little weird to go through yeah um, well, yeah, it's interesting. Um, so there were a lot of big, uh, well, there's one big, big announcement, but before that, um, breaking news that happened during Comic-Con, funnily enough, um, uh, Avengers Endgame has now become the highest grossing film of all time, just barely beating Avatar. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I, w- I had like the tab open on my phone for like, like two months, just checking the box office, uh, like like box office mojo just to see like just like updating it back and forth. I didn't think it was gonna do it. Um, I thought like I thought it was like I thought it was done a few. Um, I, th- I thought it was done a few uh, uh, a few months ago. Um, but no, they uh, <laughs> they re- they re released it. They re released it. They pushed it. They probably bought out theaters, but you know whatever. They get to say that they they get to say that they that. Uh, film of all time and they're right um which is pretty pretty nuts i mean um, like avatar was also is also a disney controlled thing I, is it now yeah Fox. Well, well i mean they didn't make the money from it but uh yeah but it's no, just I mean, disney has now usurped itself again how well, many how many in the top 20 highest grossing movies are some, it, are like oh like Owned by, Disney. owned by Disney. Um, I mean, more now because of the Fox deal. Yeah. Um, I don't think it would have been a, as giant a fucking monopoly as it is now. But no, they're a they're a money machine. Um, so congrats to Kevin Feige and the uh, Luis Desposito and like all the all the Marvel team. Um, they're killing it. Um, congrats to the- Samuel Jackson for getting that paycheck. Damn straight, <laughs> son. Right? <laughs> and congratulations to Robert Downing Jr. and Chris Evans, who don't have to do this shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. I feel like um, Robert Downing Jr. wouldn't have minded. Oh, oh he did. Oh, there, there is show. I mean, like, listen, that that what if show's coming up. Yeah, and neither of them are in it. Are not are neither of them in it? Do we neither know of, that for we, sure? Well, they well uh, they announced uh, they announced it, and and no yeah. one 
movies and like they showed like like 80 million cast members and the, 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 like the vast majority of people return robert downey jr and chris evans were not on that list Interesting. so um i guess transitioning from that into the uh slate announcement holy fucking shit uh, um, there, there's there's a lot of them but yeah they announced uh basically fucking all basically they didn't even announce all the movies for four um they just announced um they just fucking announced uh all their movies uh up to 2021 so just like in like a few years and then just one other um which is like insane um they actually it wasn't just the panel for the movies because obviously they're doing uh disney's launching their disney plus streaming service so they're gonna have to be putting a bunch of uh mcu content on there that it's they're gonna be shorter miniseries um uh, which is interesting. Like, obviously, they can't. You know, with these big actors, they have super busy schedules, and they're not going to be able to book them for um, long running shows. Um, but I wonder if these miniseries are going to, you know, get seasons two, three, and four. Or if they're just going to be strictly limited to the um, strictly limited to the to the time in which they appear. Because organizing this cast around one for one go of this is probably going to be pretty hard. Um, but no, uh, let's start off with, um, the first thing that they talked about, um, which was the Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, show, uh, that's coming out. We, uh, obviously the end of Endgame implied very heavily that Anthony Mackie's Sam Wilson, aka Falcon, is going to be taking over the role of Captain America, but I guess it's not going to be that cut and dry. Um, the, yeah, yeah uh, there's going to be some... There's going to be some shield shenanigans. We got new logos, like the logos that we kind of already saw. Makes sense because, like the the Captain America shield is clearly visible in the Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, logo, so that's clearly what this story is going to be about. Dre, what's your take on this? Um, I'm, I was super excited. Excited. I remember hearing rumors, rumors, uh, rumors of like this Falcon and Winter Soldier show, but before before Endgame and before we had this like officially. And uh, I might, you know, my jaw, dro- my jaw dropped at the at the end of Endgame. This looks inter- interesting. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. It's probably one of my most anticipated projects. Um, the the thing I'm pro- uh, that has me interested the most, weirdly enough, is actually the return of Zemo. Yeah, he's yeah. been confirmed to be in in this, and I believe there, he's, in an interview somebody said he he is having the purple sock. No, no, he's gonna have no. Apparently, the, well, um, all of the the footage from the actual trailers themselves were not shown. Uh, well, they were shown for to the people inside Hall H, but uh, uh, the Disney uh, the Disney ninjas um, have cracked down on anyone who's uh, uploaded it. So so far, I haven't seen any of them because they're being very very diligent about it. Yeah. Um. Uh. But so no, apparently it was shown at in the panel that Zemo's wearing the mask. That's um, amazing. That's awesome. I mean, it, it's, he's a completely different character. Yeah. Um, in the movie than he is in the, uh, it uh, is in the comics because he's just like, in the movies he's just kind of this sort of, uh, he's this Sokovian, uh, disenchanted, um, uh, sort of like special ops guy who you know uses his brain to turn the Avengers against each other, um, instead of in the comics where he is uh, a Nazi. Yeah. Um, and, uh, got a sock chemically, like a curtain chemically burned onto his face. Um, so yeah, they're doing something. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited for it. Uh, Ronnie, what do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be interesting because I know that, uh, there were like two routes I could have gone with this. Yeah. could have gone with, like at the end of Endgame at the very least, just, just going all the way back to that. They could have had Winter Soldier do that. Uh, become Captain America, obviously, and or Falcon, and you know they chose Falcon, so I may maybe they're gonna bring that up in this series. Um, probably. I'm really what the the the, the part of this that's uh, most interesting to me is uh is the fact that we one of one of the minor complaints I've had with um uh the MCU uh, m- with the MCU movies uh specifically the Captain America trilogy, which is the best trilogy, yep. um I believe. Uh, so far, uh, you know, we didn't get any news on you didn't get any news on Guardians three, um, but you know that's the only thing that I feel like so far those two are in like the best shape to to take that on. But no, it it, it is definitely the best trilogy. Um, is that I always felt like 
Um, Iron Man had a similar problem where that I didn't feel like uh, um, neither Falcon nor War Machine were fully fleshed out characters. Um, they were just kind of like, they showed up. Because like with Falcon, it, I feel like it was worse with Falcon because with Falcon, uh, he kind of shows up at the beginning of the movie, shakes hands with Captain America. They go, they bond a little bit about about their war experiences and then he comes back at the end um or like in the middle when they need they need a place to crash and, and then the third movie is all about cap and bucky yeah and yeah and he's sort of you know falcon's brought in briefly in uh he's brought in briefly in uh age of ultron and civil war but i've never i don't really know what makes this character tick um i don't know all we've all we sort of know about his backstory was the sort of the exposition that we got in uh in Civil War, or sorry, in Winter Soldier. Uh, Winter Soldier sorry. Um, and so I'm really interested to see them get it about when they put this character. Because, like, we know we know a shitload about Bucky. We don't know all that much about Sam. So I really wanted that that sort of angle to be explored. And please, for the love of fuck, give him the fucking bird. God damn. I'm very... I'm I, Yeah, I have a feeling it's mostly going to be... This is six episodes, by the way. And I'm assuming probably... He, it's probably going to be mostly the Falcon show with Bucky as a as a major as like the supporting character. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome! I uh, can't wait to see it. Uh, Marvel also announced uh, definitely the most puzzling announcement that they have made sen- uh, probably since Guardians of the Galaxy um, when they when you know everyone sort of collectively went wait what the fuck is that um, the Eternals. Oh. Uh, have been announced. Um, so, generally, my understanding of the Eternal—I mean, first of all, the cast is fucking awesome. They got uh, first of all, they got uh, um, James Madden, Salma Hayek, uh, uh, Kamal Nanjiani, and Angelina F- uh, Jolie. Yeah, um, which is like holy shit. Um, just so many names, um, and that's not even. Oh, and the girl who plays the uh, the 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 deaf lady on the walking dead she's gonna be like a deaf superhero didn't know she was actually deaf that's kind of cool um um no um no it's uh it's exciting uh they're probably um uh i don't know all that much about the eternals um what i do know is that um it's uh they're sort of like a race of immortal beings created by the celestials um and they uh they they're probably gonna be taking most influence from the neil gaiman uh, from the Neil Gaiman run, which you know Neil Gaiman's a pretty hot demand. property right now. He's uh, he's pretty in demand. Um, so Dre, uh, can you tell us anything more in about about the Eternals? Okay, so the ne- so okay, the what the Eternals are are basically, um, Jack Kirby's frustr like exasperated second attempt at the New Gods. Okay. Um, Jack Kirby. Uh, you know, oh, King of com- Comics got his start, his big start in art, at least, in uh, Marvel. And event, and um, he eventually got tired of all the projects he was doing, and he pitched the New Gods, what, like all the stuff we know, or at least a version of it, like Dark Side, Mr. Miracle, all that. Um, Marvel was like, no, that's weird. And then Jack Kirby took his ball, went, went to fucking DC, made a made the new gods and then eventually what that turned out to be frustrating went back to marvel and remake uh the new gods for marvel basically what they are are uh proto humans humans okay. they're they're the uh they're they're kind of like the the missing link thing oh uh, okay so it's the celestials bulls uh the big giant ro- god robots that you saw a little bit in Guardians, um, they they came to Earth. They they uh, t- saw the monkeys, ma- made the monkeys uh, Eternals, and had them be like these cosmic guardians. And they're like super powerful god, like probably like one of those things where if you like blow their head off, it just comes back. <laughs> hmm. Um, and also put. That's technically the reason why people in the Marvel Universe uh, are able to get superpowers. Like, in, in 
that celestial like gene or whatever like that's don't dormant in most humans oh that's, okay so that's, that's like that's like mm -hmm. where like 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 you can like evolutionarily evolutionarily trace like mutants back to that and stuff. Yeah, and that's the reason why uh, when Bruce Banner gets hit with gamma radiation, he turns into a big green monster instead of a a cancer victim. Okay, okay, <laughs> so, okay. Um, I'm sure, like most MCU movies, all the or like with like it's something like this, that'll be uh, like held off, uh, kind of like glossed over i have no clue what you do with eternals i'm assuming it's going to be thanos related because he also has lots of uh connections uh to that group maybe they come maybe they reveal themselves to earth because of the thanos thing yeah that's kind of awkward <laughs> <laughs> oops yeah but i mean like thanos his backstory was sort of described that he comes from a planet called titan and so he's um, I, 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 I can see why they would sort of, where they would go that route because there's, because they caught out already have an in. Um, but you know, yeah, it would be kind of awkward. It's like, Hey, sorry. Sorry about that. And literally all of us, all of us are like near Thanos level. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well they, they, they nerf everyone in this, uh, in this and like for the better. Um, yeah. I believe because comics are dumb, um, epic but dumb. Um, uh, but no, uh, yeah, that's the Eternals. Um, moving on, we have uh, we have an ex another exciting new uh, Disney Plus uh, series. By first named one, <laughs> um, Wandavision is happening. Um, basically, this is uh. This is a sort of weird kind of team up show between uh, uh, Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, and the Vision, who is dead. So they're going to change that, I suppose. Or not. Who or not. Or he's still dead, but he's like around. I um, mean, did you guys see the deleted scene that, uh, from Endgame that they put out? Oh, which one? The one where it reveals Gamora's fate. Uh, Gamora's? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's like, yeah. She's like alive it? again. So people are, I guess that me that could mean something for the, for like, every, everything related to Soulstone. Maybe Soulstone victims come back. Come back. I could have. Well, well, and, well. No, no, no. But because I mean, like, it, like we know shows her walking away from the battlefield. Yeah, oh no, she... no, that's because future Gamora. That's future Gamora. Dude. Oh right. So yeah. she's out here. I forgot that like happened. Yeah. yeah. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. But like, I guess she's still out there. Yeah. Um. For uh, well, for Wandavision, I don't really. This one's the biggest like question mark, and there's mainly because of like another thing we're gonna the, another movie they announced. I thought I knew really what, the, what this was uh, where this was going, but uh, due to the, uh, the one of the few sequels they announced, that's kind of like thrown all my theories out the door. Yeah, um, well, but no, it's like cool. Um, no, apparently they've talked about a '50s aesthetic, which rem back, which kind of throws back to that. That seems kind of strange. Um, but it throws back to that, uh, that one vision comment, uh, that was like super critically acclaimed. Apparently it was, uh, uh, psychedelic as fuck. Um, that was Tom King, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, they could, they, you know, there's a thousand different directions that they could go in this. Uh, they could buff, you know, it seemed like at the end of Endgame that they were buffing Scarlet Witch in terms of the, the sort of bending kind of like, even maybe they'll touch on the reality. Uh, aspects. Um, at this point, I kind of hope they do, um, because uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, room to grow for that character. Um, especially uh, same thing, sort of similar thing to what uh, Falcon. I'm ex I'm excited to see these MCU side characters in more featured starring roles, where you can kind of get into them, into their like you know into their heads a little bit more. Um, uh, and speaking of which, uh, the uh, the 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 movie that's going to tie into this the most. 
um, is the uh, frustratingly named but awesomely named Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Um, this seems pretty fun. Um, uh, oh, oh, oh! Side note. Uh, before we do that, I'm just I'll just uh, splice this in. Um, seems pretty fun, but uh, also with uh with one division uh monica rambeau is going to be joining is going to be joining the cast of that which like 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 an adult version we met her of course in captain marvel now she's uh now she's grown up that's weird yeah hope, i forgot about that that was that's wild hope that's cool i don't i don't I don't believe those char- any of those characters really have much to do with any- each other, but I'm not, like, an expert on any of them. Uh, who knows? They'll try something. Um, uh, and so, moving on from that, uh, they, we got uh, this... The movie that, that they announced that's going to tie the most into this is the terribly named, but also somehow amazingly uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So... Uh, not and the multiverse of madness like you think would if you were titling a normal thing, but no, this is Doctor Strange and he he's he's right in there, right in that madness, right in that multiverse. They, they said this was going to be a freaking horror movie or at least horror esque, having right. the and it's going to have nightmare in it. Who who should have been the villain to the first movie? I th- I, th- I, I think, think he's I think he's a fine villain to do for a sequel. Um, because I mean, like they kind of like. Like they kind of blew Dormammu in like the in like the first one. They can still do a shitload with him. He's not gone. Yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, it's interesting to see what they're gonna uh, what they're gonna do with this uh, hi- hype for nightmare, hype for horror in Marvel. That seems fun and cool. Um, hype for multiverse stuff. I hype mean, for multiverse. I'm Man, Marvel zombies. Let's do it. No. <laughs> Yes, yes. It's gonna happen. It's Come like on. the thing. Do it, uh, do it, do it, do but it. But that also they teased uh, it. In, they, they teased it in uh, in Far From Home. Do it. Here's here's the one Wait, thing. They um, Marvel zombies in Far From Home. Did you not see that part? It was in like the big trippy nightmare scene. Uh, when Mysterio is tricking Spider Man, and then he just goes to he goes oh, to. I didn't think of that as like a tease. I just and then like I'm doing like and then like 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 Tony Stark like the Iron Man shoots out of. He's just on the ground. He's a zombie, and it's like, oh shit, Marvel zombies. But yeah. I, I didn't think of that as like a Marvel zombies tease. I just thought of that as like, a, oh, they're doing, they're scary. Oh come stuff. on, it was totally a Marvel zombie thing. They, wa- I feel like they want to do it, but it's like so weird that like they probably like shouldn't. It's. it's... That's... But they should. Ugh, Marvel <laughs> zombies. Uh... Um, but the the one thing that uh, the reason this is uh. Very uh, also super like interesting is uh which is gonna be in it just like as a character yeah yeah and which also which makes me think is she does like does she get stuck in like a multi in some kind of multi or diver- uh dimensional like oh, peril oh shit in her show yeah and then that ties into oh shit maybe that m- work. maybe an alternate universe like Vision or something I don't know but that. But all that sounds interesting. It's all the, these like Disney's plus streaming things. Are real like, huh? These might matter. No, Watch it no, not. No, oh <laughs> no, it's going. To, it has to matter because it's like if they were if they weren't matter, Marvel Studios wouldn't be making them. Marvel Television would. Yeah. Um, as fucked up as that is to say, uh, it makes me depressed. But you know, uh, there's still some there's still some positive things to be found here. Um. Yeah, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is back. Uh, we don't ha- know much about the cast other than uh, other than uh, Scarlet Witch is going to be. Back. I wonder if we're going to get Rachel McAdams again because uh, I feel like she was really wasted uh, in the last in the last one. Uh, she did a really good job in her role, but she didn't have much to do, and she's Rachel McAdams, so like give her something. Yeah. I think we will. Uh... I think every everybody's com- coming back. I feel, you know, I hope this is. I hope this is a real like standout movie uh, in the phase because I mm. because 
I know a lot of people like Doctor Strange. It's really just kind of all right to me. Mm-hmm. I kind of left it cold. Yeah. Um, even people who like like it, when I like, they don't it's, really remember too much about it. Yeah, it's never like one of those things that movies that everyone like that anyone kind of vehemently defends as being one of like the best Marvel movies. Anybody um, here a big fan of Mordo? Um, that's the thing. I'm excited to see that happen because I mean they got fucking Chiwetel Ejiofor. Yeah. Um, and then like they tease they tease the start of an arc. I hope that comes back in because I don't want them to drop that and then just leave it for part three and then we haven't seen them for like eighty movies or whatever. Um, but yeah, moving on from uh, Doctor Strange, we got another uh, super cool new hero announced, uh, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, um, and they uh, they cast. Uh, the aforementioned master of Kung Fu. Um, he is being played by Simu Liu, um, which I hadn't heard of, but apparently he's this uh, sort of uh, Korean, uh, Korean Canadian uh, uh, actor. He doesn't have an explicit martial arts background, um, but he's ripped to shit um, and is apparently done some like dramas and some comedy. So he's like a real, a real uh, multi-talented. He's handsome as fuck that dude so um yeah what do you think about uh what do you think about shang chi he's a real mar- like start of a marvel uh franchise lead where it's yeah. like who is he oh and then there's like three people who are like ah oh, that guy <laughs> yeah that was that was our friend uh that was our friend ryan uh helped us film a lot of the uh a lot of the stuff at uh at comic-con you might have seen him a bit in the vlogs um, he, no, he, he was, he's a, he's a fan of Simu Liu. Um, so it's, uh, exciting, uh, to see what he's, uh, doing. I'm, I'm, I'm really hyped to see, uh, what they do because the Mandarin is returning, but not Ben Kingsley, but maybe hopefully Ben Kingsley. <laughs> Please, ben, ben Kingsley. I want to see Ben Kingsley come back so Mandarin can, like, kick the shit out of him in prison. Oh, it'd be so good, though. Cause... No. I want I Ben know. Kingsley to really be. I want him him to like show up and be like, "No, I'm actually the Mandarin." I yeah. actually was the Mandarin. I mean, whole time. I, I double, forget double. who. It, sorry. Uh, no go. Okay, I was gonna say I forget who it was that did this, but I remember that there is a clip out there that exists of Ben Kingsley Mandarin in prison, right? No, and no, then that he was meets like the actual Mandarin. No, this was um, this was that was the Marvel one shot. Call. I'll, I'll have the Kim that they released with the Iron Man 3. Um, it's Marvel used to do, they don't do it anymore, which sucks, but they used to do these, um, uh, they used to do these, uh, awesome, uh, sort of like short film type things that would, that were set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And, uh, uh, like the last one and probably the most ambitious one that they did was um was called all hail the king where it showed what happened to ben kingsley's character trevor slattery after the events of iron man 3 where he you know he's obviously arrested for uh orchestrating terrorism um but he 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 develops like a a a sort of like a weird fandom in prison um uh and he's interviewed by this uh dude who turns out to be a, a representative from the aforementioned 10 rings organization that was uh that was seen in iron man um and so uh, he gets taken by some. He gets taken by. Uh, he gets taken by the interviewer uh, from the prison to sh- kind of show what. Uh, in, like the 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 big line is that you know, uh, uh, you st- like who's my your boss? Uh, you stole his name, and he wants it back. So the Mandarin is real, and uh, and they're doing him. I am excited for that. Uh, they have. Uh, they have uh they have cast uh they have cast him. Um uh also Aquafina's in the cast, so that's exciting. Oh um, uh Carol. What up? Sorry, I just wanted to make a correction. They still do the short movie things. No, they don't. They're, yeah, they do. They did one for Thor Ragnarok. Where no, that, that was a different thing. That was uh in it, like a like a mo- like a internet thing. Like an not Oh are you talking about Team Thor? Yeah, Team Thor. No, that you don't know, no, that's not a thing. Different thing? Different, different. thing. Okay. God, this is gonna be so much editing. Oh god. Uh, what the fuck was I saying? Oh, they casted got... uh, Aquafiend. Yeah. Yeah, she's a really, really talented actress. Uh, in the cast. Um, yeah, looks good. Yeah, it looks good. 
It's also I mean, an Iron Man sequel, so that's weird. Kind kinda. I'm cool. I'm Shang Chi is one of my one of my favorite like C listers. There's uh, I I think he's just he's just cool. He has a. I hope they give him like the swagger kind of like asshole nature he has. As uh, I hope a Marvel protagonist is not the nicest person. Oh, uh, uh. I mean, they're really not when you think about it. <laughs> no, that's like the whole thing. <laughs> so, bro, 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 Captain Marvel was didn't smile all the time because she's not a super she's not a super smiley Marvel protagonist. You know, like the ones that they have. So that's why that movie failed by making a billion dollars. <laughs> that is true. Um, but yeah, I'm, I I. I I like me the Kung Fu movie, and I want to see one with the amount of Marvel, like, like all the Marvel money behind it. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Iron Man three apol, not an apologist because that movie doesn't have anything to apologize for. Uh, yes, it does. You're, a, you're an Iron Man three liker. Yeah, and I and but I am like I'm interested to see what they do with uh, Mandarin. I guess they couldn't use Shang Chi's original villain Fu Manchu. Yeah, yeah. I guess you can't do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what everyone said about the Mandarin. Like, like Marvel's really good about taking those dated characters and making them, uh, making them work. Um, I think it's uh, I because like I, I think like here's the thing. I thought that the angle that they were taking about this sort of, um, sort of like post nine eleven American sort of like fear factory kind of. Like Mandarin, the sort of like you know, almost like a, almost like a jihadist type. I thought that was very, very uh, fascinating, and I was really interested in that. They ended up pu- kind of pulling the rug out from under it in exchange for an, a different type of villain, which wasn't Aldrich Killian wasn't bad, but it was. Um, I felt it a little bit uh, underwhelming, but um, I do think uh, Iron Man three is a good movie. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, I'm just kind of excited to see where they go with it. Uh, moving on from Shang Chi, um, another Disney Plus uh, series that they announced is going to be Loki. Loki's finally getting a spinoff. Um, uh, it's def- It's going to take place with the alternate timeline version of Loki that you know yeeted off with the with the Tesseract after the uh, and you know that we saw in Avengers Endgame uh, when well, they failed to. They're writing around that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's how they're running around him getting his uh, getting killed. Real. Um, so it's not the Loki that we've uh, come to know um, over the last several movies. He, uh, there was no because like they're they're getting rid of all of his character development from uh, from everything past the end. Yeah, from Thor, from Thor: The Dark World, Thor Ragnarok, um, and then his uh, his sort of ultimate redemption in uh, in Infinity War. Um, Interesting. That fucking sucks. It I'm a little actually, sucks, but it's I'm, like I'm okay with it. I, I'm I'm sad that we're not gonna get the uh that we're not gonna see that. But at the same time, uh, I'm because he's so much more of a dick now. <laughs> um, that he's gonna uh that he's gonna there was gonna be like a rumor that it was gonna be sort of Doctor Who esque, and that he's gonna sort of be jumping to different points in time and influencing uh important events. That sounds like fun to me. That sounds yeah, especially because he's a uh, because uh, he's such of a, a, a mischievous lad. Um, I would like to see uh, Loki influence uh, famous people into making big mistakes. Which um, one's coming out first, this or What If? Um, uh, uh, What If is set for uh, summer, and Loki is set for spring. Ah, oh, because I I would love to see I would love to see, yeah, Loki. Well, you know, while he's travel like like jumping around in space and time, I'm him, him just show up like something unexplainable happens in a what if episode, right? Yeah. And then in that in a, a Loki episode, you see like the other side of it, of it like somebody acts fucking like weird in one of the, in one of the anthology episodes, and and then it turns out that that person was being like controlled or manipulated by Loki in some fashion. Oh, that's dope. Be yeah. a gr- be fun. Yeah, um, yeah, but uh, yeah. Speaking of Marvel's What If, Marvel's What If, um, the first uh, animated installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, non-canon, of course, given the subject matter. This mm. is the type of shit that I've been saying was a good idea for a while. Um, yeah. 
because Marvel's What If allows them to uh, Marvel's What If allows them to do completely non-connected stories. Like I was think like I was thinking that they could do that as uh, as movies, but this is this is probably better to be honest with you. Um, also, and if you, if you look in the corner, the like the top right corner or the top left corner, sorry, of the uh, of the Mar- of the Marvel's What If logo, you know what you see. Marvel zombies. Marvel zombies. They're doing uh, it. They're doing it. Let's are, go. Are, are all of these animated? Um, yeah. Um, all? Uh, all of Marvel's What If is going to be animated. Um, uh, that's uh, cool. I, I was thinking that it would be cool to have like a mixture of both. But I, yeah. This, yeah, I like it. Um, I like no. The vast, maj- <laughs> the vast majority of the, of the cast is returning. Um not Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans, um, but you know they've earned a break. <laughs> um, no, they so, haven't. Entertain me more, humans. God, get back to work. Um, no, it's uh, I, I'm I'm excited about it. Um, looks pretty uh, looks pretty cool. The only one that we know, like scenario that we know is happening, is that uh, I believe the first episode is going to be about what happens if Peggy Carter took the Super Soldier Serum instead of Steve. Um, so British Captain America, <laughs> um, Captain Britain, is that what we're doing? That's cool. Please. Um, Marvel. Piss it, pissing off, pissing off the people who, who hate ca- Captain Marvel again. That's awesome. Yes. I'm down. I'm always down to do that. Yeah. Um, so what do you guys think? I, I, I'll say this, Ronnie, what is the biggest, what if story that you want them to do? Give us the golden oldie, you bastards. <laughs> they can't wait. Could do the golden oldie. They could do the golden but oldie. She's not, she's not old. Okay, golden oldie. Okay, the... That's what makes it more funny now that she's not old. She's Imagine like... her getting mad because people call her old and then just smiting them with cosmic power. And for anyone who doesn't know, the golden oldie was in uh was an original the like originally was done in a Marvel What If scenario where what if Aunt May got the power cosmic? Oh, they really shit. could do that. They really could do that very easily, and it's epic. Give us the golden oldie, bastards. That, yeah, I'm, yeah. Give us golden oldie. Um, this could be an excuse to sow the seeds of Miles Morales before they do Miles Morales in the movies, which they will. Yeah. Um, Peter Parker fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, they, no, they just, they have a ton of, uh, they have, like, there's basically limitless uh, possibilities that they could do with this. I'm really excited for it. What uh, if they didn't come back? What if Rhodey died? What if... Uh, uh, what if, I don't know. What if he gave it to to, to, to Bucky? What if uh, uh, Cap what gave if, the shield to Bucky? What if Captain America got laid before he got the shield? What if the N- Marvel Netflix existed? Shh. What if okay, they that's another that's another, that's another that's another that's another that's another that's another Please use the TV cast. Please just have just have fucking bring Chloe Bennett in for an episode. Have Mike Coulter in. You're It'd be defi- great. You're definitely going to see what if Coulson didn't uh like fake die. What if Coulson... Oh my god. That was called Agents of Fucking... Shield. Like, 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 it's gonna be like... Like, they just keep Loki in, or, or in containment or something like that. Like, what, what if Coulson... What if, like, the inspiring, like, Coulson death... Didn't happen? Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. You're gonna see that. And that... And it's gonna be, like, sad. Yeah. What if Nick Fury did, like... I don't know, did, did his job. I mean, after, like, Far From Home, it's questionable where Nick Fury was this entire time. What if Nick Fury was white? <gasps> do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And he's it's racist, so he doesn't... No, no just, he doesn't, he's racist. He's racist, so he doesn't allow any... in uh, the Avengers. <laughs> uh, so basically just uh, the Avengers from the first movie. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Um, so no, we have, uh, we have, uh, one last big, uh, one last big, uh, Marvel Netflix, f- Disney Plus show, fuck me. Uh, I can only dream. Um, 
uh, Hawkeye is coming to uh, is coming to our screens uh, shortly. It's going to be probably the end for Jeremy Renner, I think. Um, uh, like sadly, probably so. I don't. I don't want to. I, I I would like for him to hold hold on to this for a little bit, but yeah, he, it's about him training uh, Kate Bishop. It's seems to be taking from one of my favorite comics, uh, Hawkeye. Uh, Life as a weapon. Oh yeah, because that's the, the the logo that they show. It's the exact uh, same. Change. It's just the logo from. It's just that Life logo. Yeah. It's. I'm really interested in t- in this. I w- I want. I. It was always weird during your as Hawkeye because Hawkeye is really well known for his like snark and sarcasm and particularly like rivalry with Captain America and we never saw that. But Jeremy Renner's also like pretty well known for his snark and sarcasm. Yeah. So it's kind of weird that they never did that. I hope they, and I so I hope hope that gets to kind of get uh, explored in this show. I mm-hmm. I'm curious as to how they handle Kate Bishop. Uh, Kate Bishop hype. I, I I I really want the Young Avengers in the MC. I really I, back up, back up, I back up, Dre. I can't handle it. I can't handle how much I want the Young Avengers. Those are my kids. Okay. Um, um, but yeah. Yeah, Hawkeye looks cool. Um, uh, okay, uh, one one more big movie that we kind of already knew uh, before we talk about the... the oh, no, wait, there's two more after this. There um, are two more. Um, uh, but, like, this big one uh, that they announced that we kind of already... that the, the internet knew by the time they made the announcement. Um, we didn't know the name. Uh, Taika Waititi is back at the helm of the continuing Thor franchise. They're not done. Thor Love and Th- Thunder is hitting our screens November 5th, 2021. Um, with? Uh, with uh, Chris Helmsworth is back. Uh, Valkyrie Tessa Thompson is back. Um, and they announced the big surprise. Natalie Volstaff Portman. Return? Yes! Yes! Volstaff! <laughs> Well, <laughs> he gets out, but this time he's actually the Punisher. Um, oh. um, no, uh, no, uh, uh, Natalie Portman's back. Jane Foster's a thing, and she's Thor. They're remaking the hammer, and she's gonna have the hammer, and it's cool. Um, sucks that we won't get the mystery about who's the who's the female Thor. Um, but they probably couldn't do that in a movie anyway. Yeah. Um. Uh, but no, that's exciting. There's so many angles that they could take with this. Um, are they going to do, uh, are they going to do the cancer? Are they not? Um, I think that would be a really interesting angle to take. Could, could sort of explain, sort of retcon explain the Thor, the Thor Jane break that she kind of got this like horrible news and just like had to process this and like cut Thor out because his life was insane. You know, yeah. that may, that would make so much sense. Kissing a dude who has a bunch of lightning going through him probably really isn't good for that. Okay, that I don't think that was it. No, it, no. Let Spider Man rain it up. No, oh, no. Yeah. Thor gave it to her, dude. Oh my god! If they do, I'm done. Or but... also, also having like a cosmic space rock in you. Oh, the, oh that that did happen. Yeah, yeah, maybe that maybe that was it. <laughs> um. No, it's uh, uh, super interesting. Natalie Portman was obviously, she was credited and uh, went to the red carpet for the Endgame premiere, um, uh, despite not actually having filmed for the movie. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm sure, I'm sure she was very dis, uh, disillusioned with uh, working at Marvel for the last one uh, 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 because of the, the, the sort of like, the Thor of the Dark World was a messy production. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, they got her back in. We're like, do you want to be a superhero now? <laughs> um, it's exciting. Uh, Taika Waititi's visionary director. And so um, as a big fan of the first Thor, uh, I think this, this is and like a less... I, I really liked Ragnarok. It's not my favorite Thor movie. I know I'm weird. You don't have to tell me. Um, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see... Uh, where Taika Waititi goes because he's really, really smart, and I hope that he can sort of continue this this sort of kind of role that he's on right now um, as this big breakout director because um, he's uh, he's killing it. Um, anything else you want to say about uh, Thor: Love and Thunder? Enchant- uh, Enchantress. Oh yeah, fuck. Hopefully they do Enchantress. We don't That's know if they're. Prob- 
I mean, I know everyone thinks love, um, Jane Foster, that that's kind of the thing. Uh, but I also think like Enchantress is the last really big Thor villain that they haven't done uh, in any capacity. And it's weird because she's really great. Yeah, do it. Do it. Um, I can't wait for people to be, I, I can't wait to go hose mad on the people that are like, female Thor? It's already happening. It's already happening. It is oh, already mad. happening. Hose, Hose mad. mad. Hose get mad. And hey, guess what? I guess this kind of whole this Marvel, uh, uh, this Marvel panel, uh, was a lot of hose mad. Yeah. Um, but uh, I will say, uh, including me for one reason that we'll get to later. Um, uh, this this hoe got mad. Um, but yeah, uh, big surprise. They are making a Black Widow movie. Not like we didn't know that already. <laughs> what? I uh, don't understand much of the point, but that's just me. It, okay, so it's 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 a prequel, but it's not an origin prequel. This is going to take place between Civil War and uh, Civil War and Infinity War. The two the two wars. It's going to it's the war war break. Um, oh, yeah. Dead. So it's, so like that's cool. Um, seems uh, it's like a strange time to put it. And also seems like a weird time to make this movie and not have made in, in not have made this movie in between those two movies, right? Yeah, it's like strange, but uh, David Harbour's in it, um, Florence Pugh's in it, uh, and we get Taskmaster, so I'm happy. So you so you say you don't see much point in this, Ronnie? Yeah, I'm just like what she she's her character's dead, so I'm not sure what development i guess like yeah we're getting taskmaster and there might reveal a couple of things but it's just a really weird way to go about it because every character in the avengers uh that like in the original avengers got a movie that like either like captain america he got his uh, origin story movie iron man got his origin story movie thor ev- thor hulk I guess. <laughs> yes, it happened, and it was good. Okay, buddy. You keep lying to yourself. Anyway. Too big uh, brain because I'm right. No. No. If you think you're big brain for liking Hulk, you're a sad, sad man. So. Anyway, look. Point is, it they all got their, like, respective movies done and out of the way, and, like. Hawk, I didn't. Talk I didn't, but like, it, it, they're not even act, actually. Are they even planning a movie for Hawkeye anymore? Well, no, no. There's no the mo- the show. The show we just talked oh, about, right? But that's like, but that's not going backwards, right? No. no. Yeah. So this is why it confuses me because this is this is a past the character, you know, kind of like getting hard oofed, going backwards in time as well, instead of like. Well, afterwards, but they can't go afterwards, right? No, I mean, like, I get they could. They could, but, like, like, it'd be, it'd be, like, weird. Okay, but, like, the movie's gonna be good, though. Like, spy movie, poli- like, political thriller, I mean, like, Black Widow, Russian shit. Gee, it's really I mean, fucked I'm up. Not gonna say it, I'm not gonna say it's, like, bad. I'm just saying it's, like, a weird time to, like, release it, and I don't really get much of the point, you know? Yeah. No, I'm excited. Um, It's also kind of funny how, uh, how out of style uh russian villains used to be but they've come back in a big way since you know 2016 yeah um so no it's like they can do like the stereotypical russian uh villain now and actually have it work i'm excited taskmaster is fucking cool yep. um yeah. i heard i heard things that the from the footage uh we saw that the, the taskmaster at least one, the one we see like the one in the footage is a female oh really? shit really that's cool. Apparently, for, apparently that's, cool. that's uh, some stuff I I've heard. Um, oh, maybe that's uh, maybe they're gonna make uh, Florence Pugh uh, Taskmaster. Um, yeah, I'd be excited for that. She uh, uh, people might know her as well. At least I know her uh, as she played Paige in the Fighting for My Family movie that was like a biopic about her life. Um, Paige, oh, that, WWE that. wrestler. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh it looks cool. Rachel Wise is in as a uh as presumably a big villain um she's cool yeah movie movie looks good um okay moving on from that that's basically everything that we knew about 
Um, now for the movie that got uh, that got some hoes mad, particularly got this hoe mad. Um, uh, Blade. Blade's happening. No one knew about it. It's exciting. Blade hype. Uh, but Blade is Mahershala Ali, and Mahershala Ali was Cottonmouth. Um, it doesn't matter. Cottonmouth. Yes, you know, big major villain in the uh, in the Marvel Netflix universe that is canon because you said it. You said it was. It's I like don't... shows canceled. Hose mad. Shows canceled. Hose mad. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I don't seem to remember any any Netflix shows uh, Thanks, with yeah, that particular okay, brand on it. Okay, thanks, Kevin Feige. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. In all seriousness, he's going to be a kick-ass b- yeah. I'm just mad because he was Cottonmouth. He's <laughs> really been dominating, like, everything. Man's having a great couple years. Yeah, uh, good job on Green Book, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I kid, I kid. He went that from was, Green Book. He went from Green Book. Bro. He went from Green Book to Blade. Okay, he's doing fine. He's I like doing him. Doing fine. Blade's cool. I hope you know, like, you know, Blade's the reason. The Blade movies are like the broad reason why superhero movies like became so big. We wouldn't have have like this entire boom without them. It's yeah. good to see them finally come to Marvel. I'm, you know. A cool vampire movie. Fuck yeah, vampire. Is this the first? Is this? Huh. I'm, I guess Dracula might not be the villain. Why but not? It, uh, they could do it. They could he, do it. Yeah, he totally could, and that would mean it's the first time, first public domain Marvel villain. Um, like first time Marvel used a public domain character as a villain. That's fine. That works. Yeah. I mean, they have fucking. Cool. They have fucking Thor. I guess Thor is in the public domain. Uh, I can't wait for them to do um, the the monster the the monsterverse for. Uh, that is, I hope there's. I actually hope there's a lot of like. We just I mean, delve they, into that monster universe. Yeah, I mean, we could do that in. Uh, they could like, start with that in Multiverse of Madness, um, and then oh shit, vampires go go blade go. Um, no, apparently. There's the interview that um, basically as soon as as soon as Mahershala Ali won his Oscar for Green Book, uh, he just like ran right up to he just ran right up to Marvel and's like, "Hey, I want to be Blade," and they're like, "We're not gonna stop you." Oh. Um, so it's like that's like the reason why they're making it now because uh, it's a passion project for Mahershala. Um, that it's gonna be awesome. Probably not rated R, which is gonna be um, yeah. But hell, um, like cool, kind of like slasher, like it, like it can't, probably can't be like super gothy, but like I want it to. It, I do too. It's it'd be cool. Um, all of the movies and uh and and shows that were announced here have a very very different feel to them. Um, overall, this is the big like this was like this announcement was huge, but it's also sort of symptomatic of the sort of problem that I had with this Comic Con in general is because nobody wanted to fucks with this. Yeah, everyone just kind of steered clear to let Marvel plop their ten inch dick on the table. Um, we're so... picking Mahomes people for the rest of this stuff. <laughs> um, but there were uh. There were other things uh, that were announced. Um, uh, we got the trailer. Uh, we got the big uh, Comic Con trailer for The Witcher uh, Netflix series. Um, this is exciting because you know Game of Thrones is over now, and people really, really like their fantasy shows. So I'm thinking that this is going to be their sort of like their like placeholder. That's got, probably not going to be as good until until they realize, oh, wait, this is just basically Game of Thrones, but not. So they're going to move on and find another big show to be obsessed over. Here's the thing with Witcher, because it's real interesting, because it always markets itself like game, like it's a Game of Thrones thing, right? Mm-hmm. The thing is, Witcher, like, as a franchise, really, like, it's dark, it's dark right? But mm-hmm. it's more of a dark comedy than, every, than anything else. Yeah, isn't Which it more is, of like a detective story? It's like a detective story with a story with this like, like dry, sarcastic, like dude who's 
yeah, he's fighting all these monsters, but it's just like his day job. And like he has to deal with all these stupid peasants. And like and he has to deal with all these fucked up Portuguese like fairy tales, which are like like the grim tales, but even like weirder. Yeah. But it's not like but it's not like written like a fairy tale. It's just like all these people are just like living here. It it's just it's real like interesting yeah. and this that's kind of the thing problem I had with this trailer is it seemed a little like dark and generic. But well, that's the, kind of all Witcher trailers. Yeah, well, this is um uh I don't have I've never played a Witcher game. Um, but apparently these uh all I like the like like the biggest thing I remember from the Witcher franchises is that Witcher DL, never forget the Witcher 3 DLC one RPG of the year at the Game Awards yeah. a few years ago. That's that, still funny. That was fucking stupid. Um no, but um apparently this is gonna be more based on the books. Than the uh, than the than the game, uh, it, it's like it clearly aesthetically based uh, a lot on the game, um, but no, it's 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 going to be uh, they're taking they're taking most of their influence from the books, uh, the Witcher uh, books, uh, which maybe those are darker. Um, apparently, there is going to be a bathtub scene. <laughs> so, of course. Okay. Oh, it's not Witcher without nudity. It really ain't. Um. Uh, and an Iron Witcher uh, without hoes getting mad. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, if you follow the male romance options, you get to have sex with men. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, <laughs> who who to thunk it? Um, no, it's a uh, uh, trailer looks good. Sort of like, yeah, you're you're right. It sort of feels like like this kind of dark fantasy. It felt very Game of Thronesy. Um, nice. I hope it does well. Uh, and uh, yeah, looks cool. Um, Henry Cavill is a uh, in that, uh, which you know, glad to see he's not fallen off the face of the earth after uh, not being Superman, except not, except yes, maybe, but no, but what the fuck is what? <laughs> I think he's teased that he's still doing it for the eighth time today. Yeah, God. <laughs> Ugh. Um. Yeah. Uh, moving on from that, uh, we got another. Like, uh, I mean, we we got the big uh trailer like a while uh for uh the new Batwoman series. Batwoman advertisements were all over uh, Comic Con. They were on buses. They were on, uh they were on bags. They were on uh they were like there were signs. They were everywhere. Um, um, but no, I mean, we got this sort of uh you know we got the big thing where she uh where you kind of get to meet, the trailer where you get to meet Kate Kane uh first and foremost, sort of see what she's about. Um, and sort of how she uh, stumbles into the identity of uh, Batman um, or Batwoman, as she's uh, dubbing herself, which is cool. Uh, but we got this sort of shorter, uh, this sort of shorter teaser thing that like seemed to show a lot of personality. That um, it just showed a bunch of people going into a tattoo shop to get uh, to get work done, and they all show like the like it's it starts off with the with the tattoo artist just asking them questions about what they want and they're like nah and each person like person after person after person comes in and holds up a uh holds up a, a piece of paper and it looks at it and he's like and then he just like keeps doing like the, it's like implied that it's the same thing and then kate uh kate kane comes in he's like she like knows the the uh, the tattoo artist and he's like hey what's up what's uh what's going on here and it's like you know they all want the same thing and it's the bad it's the bad symbol um, which is like, that's cool. Cause I mean, the last time people got bat symbols marked on them, uh, it didn't really end well. Yeah. Um, uh, but no, this seems to ha be, have a much po uh, positive message. Uh, looks cool. Um, a lot of people, it didn't seem to set a lot of pants on fire. Um, but I'm, I'm actually uh, excited. I don't know. Is arrow? Please don't be. Cause I want to watch it. <laughs> this like, <laughs> I'm a fan of Batwoman. I'm like a big fan. Um, this will, the, I, I was not, I've never been like too like enthused about this project. Not just, not like, cause I have anything against it. It's just like, it's another CW show. It'll get, it'll be fine for the first season. They get really good in the second season and start to trail off a bit. And I'll just keep watching. It. Start and, to trail off a bit and then jump the shark when they start doing white, like shit that they're definitely not prepared to do. And it's like, you know, I'll be, it looks cool. I like the casting. Yeah. Batwoman. Yeah. Batwoman looks cool. Fuck. Um, uh, also a big one that we uh, have to do. 
big the big meme one of the biggest memes coming uh coming out of comic con was uh they released the trailer for cats they're doing cats there's cats um okay look i'm a uh i i, I study theater that's a that's a passion of mine um I'm going to get so much hate for this from theater nerds, but I think Cats is a bit overrated, to be honest. Uh, soundtrack's good, um, but it's just a little kind of meh. Um, I've, seen, I've seen it live before, um, and it's like, I don't know what the fuck they thought they were doing with this, uh, but uh, uh, good job, furries. You get to... You get to have something to to obsess over for a while. See what happens when you're com- when you complain that the lions aren't expressive of enough in the Ryan- Lion King remake. Yeah, the, this is what you get. <laughs> uh, okay, I saw the best tweet when Cats was originally trending, where people were like voicing their concerns. The tweet said, uh, "You know, if we only let the furries handle this, this wouldn't have been a problem." I think I think that's accurate. Yeah, actually, probably yeah. It, <laughs> I like, think. I think any first, every first suit I've seen is more aesthetically pleasing than these things. Um, it's fucked up because there are some bad first suits, but my god, are you right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. I was like, oh, this guy's got like me an idea. Fuck. No. Um. Fuck. Ugh. 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 They got James Corden and they got Taylor Swift. Who the fuck cares? Moving on. <laughs> Um, Watchmen trailer. It's not Watchmen. <laughs> this isn't Watchmen. Um, it's not. Uh, it's after Watchmen, but it's well, then why? D- I don't know. I don't it's know. cut it out with the Rorschach cosplay. The show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, um, it. Go, go. go on. No, you. No, me. Uh, what? Watch. <clears throat> okay, so like, yeah, this is like, I really. So Watchmen set in the modern day is kind of a weird concept. Yeah. Just like, I'm, I'm guessing this is just kind of like a straight up sequel. Okay. Cool, which is like cool. Oh, Watchmen, I think, is ubiquitous enough that most people. Are, are probably probably know what's going on at least in the broad strokes um and so like 20 so it's like 2019 and it's after the big squid or, or if they do the movie ending the big manhattan explosion and everybody's and life just kind of goes on which is kind of weird cuz it's like we were leading to new war but like whatever and the trailer is kind of about like this family of uh i'm a, of like police officers who are raising their kid in this world and they have to like deal with this like new uprising of like people who follow rorschach's journal yeah at the end of watchmen basically rorschach mm-hmm. sends his journal of all like the debauchery shit that happens in Watchmen, uh, to get published, to get published, and you know that's kind of that's an interesting idea. All these people kind of like worshiping Gorshak, who's a guy you really shouldn't be, and following the t- teachings. Like I, I dig that. Um, I don't know. This it looks like a fine crime show. Yeah, I'm like like. I like Watchmen a lot, but um, I'm not too. This one's not gonna. I mean, I mean they kind of like. I mean, like Zack Snyder fucked with the uh, Watchmen once, um, even though I guess it wasn't that bad. I, don't, I haven't seen it like forever. I don't really don't remember anything. It's um, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So cool. Hope it's good. Um, Someone who has never seen Watchmen, this this trailer confused me. Yeah, because it's, it's not Watchmen. It's it really is like you know, I kind of like get what they, they do because we have so there's so many shows like where it's like, oh, it's like like playing off like the like like the events of like a King Arthur story and it's 
and you just kind of have to like know what's going on for the first season. And I guess Watchmen's might be that ubiquitous. This just I don't really know Not who this is for. Be an HBO show. I don't know who this is for. Mm-hmm. It's 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 an it's an odd choice. To... Jeremy Irons as Ozzy Mandius is amazing, though. I mean, like, not like we would know because we didn't fucking we didn't huh? see him. Not we would know because we didn't fucking see him. We did saw him at the end of the trailer. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's like. Look... Mask looks more like it's made out of like a sock, but hey. No, no, that's. I don't even know who that is. The dude with the blue mask. But we see him like near the end of uh, end of the trailer. He's like saying shit, and he and he sounds like Jeremy Irons, and you're like, ah, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do the do the speech. Cool. It'll be cool. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, moving right along. Um, what's this sort of deal? Because like, you know, this is a little bit more locally based, but um, uh, opening pretty. They did this. 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 We didn't go to this like opening uh kind of fundraiser for a comic-con museum that they're, they're going to be opening um yeah. Yeah. and it's it's so it seems kind of interesting i don't really know what they're going to do with that what do y'all uh what what what, what can you kind of tell us about the comic-con museum um okay so my so i i learned about this a, a little bit ago basically um they're opening up a comic uh comic-con museum it's going to be dedicated to all the history of uh like you know, geek cul- culture, uh, and and specifically Comic Con, on uh, not much detail on like what they uh, plan on getting, um, but uh, uh, over uh, Comic Con weekend they did a fundraiser to raise funds for it, and they started their first uh, Comic Con uh, character, like comic book character Hall of Fame. And that was a, the, one of the things that they're going to be doing every year for this a, at this museum. They did it there, and the first character they entered up, they uh, inducted Batman. Oh come on, lay off! I mean, that's he deserves what, it. What they're gonna do? I mean, if it's if it if it's truly a Comic Con Hall of Fame, for, uh, the first character they should have inducted was fucking Deadpool. Jesus Christ! Yep, but like, <laughs> it's like. People need to I've chill gone, out. I've, I've gone on on rants about about this, but let's just say I have a little bit of a disagreement with that choice. But otherwise, it seemed cool. Uh, Jim Lee was there to uh, induct duct uh, Batman. Uh, they had like a bunch. Of, they had all the suits for for like every live action ver- version of it. They had all all this like crazy blown up art. It was really cool. I'm guessing we're gonna be, you know, like I'm guessing they're keeping a lot, gonna keep a lot of that for the museum. Pro, I think they have a uh, the uh, eighty-eight. Is it Batman eighty-eight? Mm-hmm. The eighty-eight Batmobile. There. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah, and I and I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're trying to get all all that Batman mer- memorabilia. So, oh, you mean? Oh, sorry, Batman eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. Uh, yeah. That was it. Was just a cool thing. Where thing, uh, you know. Stay tuned for twenty twenty one when we cover oh. the opening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if if GBG hasn't killed me by then, <laughs> um, uh, okay, that's gonna be it for Comic Con stuff. Um, but we're not done yet. Dre has an exciting returning segment for you where he uh, delves in deep into a comic book that he's been enjoying and reviews it for all of you lovely people out there. Dre's Comic Corner is coming up next, presented by Comic Critical. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dre's Comic Corner. And today we're going to be doing something a little different from our usual visit to this considerable corner. Today we're going to be looking back on Jim Zub's recent champions run with art by Stephen Cummings. Unfortunately, champions will be getting canceled next October, but don't take this as a sign of the book's quality because Jim Zub helps breathe life into what once was a relatively underwhelming team in my opinion. In this run, the team pulls a full Justice League Unlimited, expanding its roster to easily over 10 members. 
in some other books, expanding the roster to this degree might make you think that each character would be lacking in uh, depth or attention. But Zub does a great job balancing that with each issue being a spotlight issue of sorts. The book really does a great job of portraying teenage superheroes working together, which is something we don't see enough of in modern day comics. It reminds me of some older Teen Titans stories that I've read, and I think is well worth taking a look. Champions was a great read, and I'm sad it's ending. So I want to provide a little spotlight and tell you to pick it up. Go check it out. Thank you, Dre. That was very insightful. Or it wasn't. Um, okay, um, <laughs> moving on to to our favorite segment, segment recommendations. Um, starting off uh, to transition nicely from Dre talking about comic, co- comic books to Dre talking about comic books. Dre, what did you bring to recommendations? I I I I brought uh I brought a comic I brought I brought a co- comic like probably Jesus this comic uh so good okay so the X Men have sucked for like the last year there's been good stories but broadly I think I can just say blanketly they have kind of sucked Marvel hasn't really known what to do with them hasn't really wanted to do anything with them uh forever um. But a while ago, we got the announcement that uh, superstar writer Jonathan Hickman, and whoop, whoop. the dude who uh, tried to reboot the Marvel Universe, but then they were like, nah, and then he was like, fuck you, and, then, and he was like, uh, I'm going to sue you guys while I work, work on my indie books, and Marvel's like, uh, but like, don't, and he was like, okay, fine, I guess I'll just go and fix your X-Men for you, and that's how we got this. Gamer. He's also still tweeting about how he still wants to sue Marvel. <laughs> Even though he's uh, working for them. I know he's working for them and making them. Yes, he's awesome. <laughs> uh, so, oh, he's basically coming and he's, and, um, he's completely retooled the X-Men and we're getting all the books relaunched with all these new different teams, uh, characters and creative teams. Um, and the the goal is just to make the X Men the most relevant book, like it was in the '90s. And the fir- and the first uh, the issue of that initiative is House of X number one. What I brought. Um, so basically, the the book starts, and um, it, start, it starts off with uh, these with all these ambassadors from all these different uh, countries, I believe Russia, China, and France. And they show up uh, to this like weird, weird building that's all covered in these mo- and this moss. And it's revealed, built very quickly, that um, Krakoa, uh, for you guys who don't know, uh, when uh, X-Men was originally uh, brought back in the 70s, uh, like on its second run, run after it like failed, the first villain they fought was a like was a sentient planet who was a mutant, uh, called Kakro- Kakoa, well, which is like this big sci- just a big psychic like, uh, island mutant. Cool. Yeah. So, oh, what they uh, show us is like the X Men have kind of harnessed Kakoa into all these different, like, into basically being, like, this bioorganical, like, structure for a new mutant civilization. Um, they plant them all over the world and universe. Uh, and, they ha- and they have, like, these different flowers. flowers um, and these, uh, like, these flowers of Krakoa that can make, uh, they can, like, make, uh, like, teleporters if you walk, walk through them, but only if you're a mutant, you know, or with a mutant. And they have all these different effects on mutants, but principally, and the reason why the, all these ambassadors are here, they they have all these special, uh, there are these great, like, antibiotics. Um, one, uh, cures all brain, re- brain-related illness. Um, the uh, other basically creates, like, a super drug that, get, that can add, like, 
uh, five years to a, to a normal human's life. Damn, that's convenient. Uh, and it's ones just like a straight up anger arc. You won't get sick. Ick. Oh fuck. Yeah. So they basically just like cured life. Basically, yeah. And they're and the uh, professor X he, X has uh, like taken these and he's. Uh, found one of Marvel's many uh, like secret islands that nobody knows about, out, mm-hmm. and he's said uh, to all to the UN, okay, like you guys have tried. I get cohabitation's not happening. You guys made that clear. Here we've tried to make our own civilizations. They've all they've all failed because you guys fucked it up. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing in. Every case of evolution's past, the new, the new, the superior species dominates and kills the other. But I'm not about that. We could, if we really wanted to, kill everybody. But we don't want to do that. We're, we just want our island, and we're going to let you guys, like, live out, you know, the whole humanity thing and let that shit happen. And, and you're just going to, like, fuck off and leave us alone. Um, and if you do that, you get these these special like here's. here's. Oh, cool. Um, what are you talking about? That it's not okay that we have teleporters everywhere, here on the planet, and we we have like armies. What are you talking about? That we're that you're. I'm me, Professor X. I'm not talking to you. My tour guide Magneto is. <laughs> oh. What are you talking about? That I, that the book started off with me looking like looking like a villain when watching over all these like pod people grow out of like trees. <laughs> okay, so Professor X went a little went a little Listen, no, w- everybody's w- smiling. You get this great image of of the only time you see him in the book, he's like hanging out with all these like mutant children and he and you see uh, Wolverine's also playing with him, and he has the biggest grin on his face. Everything's fine. Just don't try and talk to him. <laughs> it's it's so. The, yeah, this book is setting up seeds for the X Men to ha- they're, they're, have their own civilization, which some we've seen before, but it's not in like this kind of like sinister way. Okay. Um, the book is littered with all these like uh, different like. In info dump pages, which they actually brought in like a accomplished graphic designer to help help create. Cool. A, that basically re explains all like the current situation with like Krakoa and all these plants and what's going on. On, but it also just explains how mutants work. They have their own uh, island. I think the planet the island is just called Krakoa, and it has this big breakdown of like maps. You have like the the house. Uh, you have like a house of X, and you have a house of M, and you have like an arena. House of M. Mm? <laughs> and and there's all the there's all this like neat like world building and teasing for future like my- mysteries. Um, there, uh, like one of the things that's brushed her off like super or quickly is that there there's like this organization. That's hovering like right outside the Earth's atmosphere. That's made up of all these different, like, uh, Marvel like, uh, like top secret scientist spy groups, groups like AIM or Shield or Hydra. Um, and they're sorry, all... sorry, I actually I don't understand anything X Men. Uh, I don't understand anything X Men related if it's. That in a forest uh, or a military industrial complex. Well, you'll be in luck because there are forests and they're drawn beautifully because this is the best looking book of the year. It's, <laughs> it's I'll, I'll say the coloring and just like pencil work. It's just, it's, um, it's amazing. Everything l- looks like, it looks like the most important book out there, here, which is, which is great. Um, there, there's, man, I just want, I really, there's like too much for me to, to gush over. Um, but I think I'll, so I'll summarize 
eyes kind of like the how this book feel feels or the how this how the tone of this book with like a scene um so 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 i'll just describe a scene to you the books interlaced with all these di- this tour by this tour given by magneto to all these ambassadors um and it keeps cutting away from that to show other things that, the, that like how mutant kind is kind has a uh, is, a, is adapting to this because basically it doesn't matter good guy or bad guy it, you're a mutant now it's fine we're trying to set up our own civilization uh that that doesn't stop anyone that hasn't made anyone good it just means they're all that they all have one place they go so you see the brotherhood of like mystique saber tooth and toad all stealing information from damage control where it's revealed that da- damage control, along from with uh, building, like taking care of like wreckage after superhero battles, mm-hmm. also takes uh, like stores, like technology or research or whatever, or from like super scientists after they like pass or can't hold on to their stuff. So right now it's like Reed Richards was gone for years. Oh yeah. no! But it's okay because. As everybody has uh, has basically signs signs off like a person that they're gonna like give their research to. And Reed Richards had Tony Stark. Oh, he was in a giant coma. So so now dam so now damage control has has just has Iron Man suits and tons of doc or uh, fantastic uh, Mister Fantastic's research. And it's all, all that information has been stolen by the Brotherhood. Not even really all dealt with in this book. It's just, you know, a plot point we can have for later. As you do. <laughs> and eventually they get caught, the, the Brotherhood, they make their escape. And they eventually get caught off by the Fantastic Four. Four. And they, they, get, they get trashed, the, the Fantastic Four trash them and are about to arrest them. And then... Cyclops shows up from one of their like creepy plant portals and goes, "Hey, yeah, you know, it's go- it's good to see you, Reed. It's good to see you, Sue. How are the kids? Everything's going well. Um, so you know how you guys have to deal with Doctor Doom all the time, and he he actually has diplomatic immunity. Well, we're our own nation now, and like, sorry, you're just gonna have to hand over them to me. Like I and." I know they just killed people. I know they just stole your information. Like, I don't want to be here. And Reed's like, uh, no. Oh, that's not going to happen. And there's this great shot where it's like, where it's like referencing Avengers versus X-Men. Mm-hmm. And Cyclops just breaks the tension. He's like, okay, that's cool. That's cool. You guys can have them. Um, oh, I'm going to go oh, to, to our cool mutant nation. Oh, by the way, you know, Franklin, you should tell him that he's always welcome to join since he's a mutant. Uh, I mean, you got you guys can't come, but we're always gonna have open arms. See ya, pal. Uh, <laughs> man, Scott Summers is a dick. <laughs> Every it's it's this incredibly like creeping attention that go that's throughout the entire book. Look, that's basically like it's this subtle hostility from the mutants and the, that's kind of broken by the end of the issue by Magneto. Oh, because of course he would be the one because he's he's loving it. New, he's loving this new state of affairs. Everybody's on his side. He's giving a speech. He's giving speeches that you can tell that he's been rehearsing for decades. <laughs> <laughs> He tell he teleports everyone to the where's that where's that place where Jesus where Jesus caught the big fish? Uh, Jerusalem? Uh, probably. I don't know. He takes everyone to Jer- all the people on his tour to Jerus- Jerusalem and he's like, you see guys, like I'm we're us mutants, we're like not asking for diplomatic immunity. We're just gonna be your like benevolent gods. It's all fine. Fine. And and it's like, man, this is completely changing the status quo for mutants in the Marvel universe. It's completely like changing my, your perspective on 
uh, the X-Men that they might, it, instead of like, you know, this might just become like the Brotherhood. <laughs> yeah, uh, X-Men villains, question mark? It's, it's incredibly interesting. The book's written amazing. It's steeped in tons of continuity, but it's all explained super easily by the book itself. I can't like emphasize how much how much people need to get on this because Jonathan Hickman, when he gets his book, he's gonna he's gonna be on this forever. He's gonna be on it for at least like at least three years. Years and you know you're you can jump on now and you're gonna have the fucking best ride of your life because Jonathan Hickman is just that good. And there's so many other books that you can read in this like new initiative. Ah. Yeah. X-Men's back. I'm not even an X-Men fan, by the way. <laughs> no, it's like, it's, no. Um, I mean, obviously, like, the reason that they're more comfortable uh, with doing that now and making the X-Men, like, like, like kind of like a must-read book is because Disney has acquired the film, right, so that they can merchandise the X-Men and push them in, uh, in outside. They even uh, name-dropped uh, X-Men and the Fantastic Four at the end of their, at the end of their uh, Comic-Con panel. We don't know anything about it. Um, but we know what's happening. So like that, that sort of contextualizes the reason why they've chose to do this now. Yeah. Uh, but like fucking cool, man. It's fucking um, brilliant. Also, no, not a single line from Wolverine. Was he in it? Yeah, he's here. He's in one panel smiling his heart out. I posted a picture of it for all you guys. Okay. I'll put it up. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's disturbing. <laughs> I don't like his smile. It's not good. Wolverine's not a good smiler. Maybe this is why he's just drunk all the time. Yeah. It's uh, read House of X. It's it's four. It's forty damn ish or pages. It's forty pages. It's just brilliant. Uh, all right. Um. Uh. So Ronnie, what did you bring? All right. Uh, I brought Gundam Build Fighters. So, Comic-Con this year was riddled with Gundam. Yeah, it was a big anniversary. Big 40th anniversary. Gundam everywhere. You literally couldn't, like, turn the street without seeing a Gundam. Well, not a Gundam, but at least a Gundam hat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, and I really like the designs of, like, Gundams, but I've never really watched any of the shows. But the great thing about Gundam is that you can get into it through the model kits, which I ended up doing inadvertently through buying Common Rider model kits. Because <laughs> I, I bought them, I had fun making them, and I was like, fuck, I want to do this more. And I'm like, shit, there are like these uh, $15 Gundam model kits. I can like put a picture for you to put up. That I, I finished one, actually, and I did some of the de- like I, I did some extra detailing on it. Anyway. Just to stop my rambling, uh, I got into like Gundam through the model kits, and I'm like, all right, what should I watch? And I asked Mikey, and he's like, hey, you should watch G Gundam. And so I've been going through that, but I'm going through that more slowly, and I wanted something else to watch because I recently got Verb. So I'm like, hey, Gundam Build Fighters, this looks good. And I'm not talking about like the sequel series, just like the base first Gundam Build Fighters. I really liked it. Um, it's basically like your average battle shonen, except uh, this doesn't take place in the main Gundam universe. This is a universe where Gundam exists, but it, like, rather than, uh, or I guess the best way to put it, it, it's like if it was Earth and Gundams could, like, fight. Like, to- the toy Gundams can fight. Hmm. Where uh, the main character is this really big, like, Gundam fan slash uh, Gunpla maker. He really likes uh, assembling the Gunpla and, like, uh, toying with them and adding details. And oh, so actually, it's like so it's like one of those like kind of like fan of the property, but it's like real, except it's not. Yes, it like oh. the the figures are, like the the gunplay he builds are real, and like uh, they're basically put into a VR situation when they fight. Okay, sort of thing where there are like these special particles that make the uh, like toys actually move and fight like they're real Gundam, right? And so um, the cool thing about it is, is that he's really good at building them. But the thing is, is that he's not a good fighter. Like you see him fight in the first uh, episode 
and he gets absolutely like destroyed. And so he's like, shit, I want to like follow my dad's footsteps because his dad is like great at building and fighting. And also his dad's not dead. Unlike most like Shonen, he, his dad's like gone, but he's not dead. He's just a referee for uh, Gundam battles. And so he's out all the time trying to promote the, the Gundam battle like uh, kind of game. It's yeah, pretty much what it is. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he's like, fuck, I want to follow my dad's footsteps. And then this just mysterious kid, Reiji, who they don't, I don't like that they don't elaborate on this that much, but they're basically like, yeah, he's from like another world. But Reiji doesn't know anything about Gunpla, and uh, he was just like, pull, he was uh, helping Say out, Say being the main character, uh, helping Say out by like, fighting for him because he paid for one of his meals that he stole. And so uh, they become a team with Reiji being the action and Say being the uh, support. And which is really awesome because they really emphasize the fact that the strength of the uh, Gundams that they build comes from both the build quality and the fighter. The better the build quality, the better performance your Gundam will be. However, okay. if you can't pilot it well, that doesn't mean shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they create this really like efficient team of Reiji training for the battles and say training his building by getting better. And there are like there's a set series of episodes that I really like towards the middle where this uh, rival for say comes in because he's like i'm his rival's like i'm gonna be the best gundam builder ever right right and then rage and then says like but like i i i personally don't have any beef with this guy but i also want to be like the best builder ever not necessarily fighter and there's this awesome moment where they show each other their gunpla and they're not in a battle right But they're just staring at, like, each other's Gumpla, like, in awe. They're like, holy shit, this is really good. And they end up having a battle in their mind. Of, like, whose Gumpla would win. Okay, so Battle of the Mind is not cool in uh, Promised Neverland. But (laughs) it is cool. Okay. okay. I'm going to clear that up. This isn't, like, a mental... Oh, man. What? uh, Oh, like tricking people. This is like, they're literally imagining a fight between both Gundams. Oh. Yeah. They're, they're like, imagining, they're trying to s- imagine whose Gundam would win. It's like, it's like, it's like the, the scenes from Dragon Ball whenever they do the English training. Yeah. And so, uh, you eventually do get to see their Gundam fight, and I gotta say, all of the fights in this series are fucking phenomenal. It's animated by Sunrise, right? Yep. And uh, there, are some of my favorite fights, I think actually my favorite fight, is that they had this guy training Reiji. Uh, his name is Fellini. He's like an Italian Gundam build fighter. And uh, he, he runs on the world circuit constantly. And he's training Reiji to like fight on his level. And then you eventually get to see them actually fight in the tournament for real. And it's this awesome fight where both of their Gundams are like breaking because there's a lot of Gundam destruction in this series because well they're plastic models right right when they start fighting they're going to break eventually so you said his friend is from another earth is it not like space colonies in this no this is like this yeah he's uh alternate dimension we don't like know that much um, and I'm getting to, like, the final four episodes, and they still really haven't explained it. Uh, he just says, yeah, I'm this, like, prince from another world. But, who found a treasure, and I'm here. Huh? Yeah. Dude's living Isekai? Basically. And so he's just here, fighting the Gundam and having fun. And, like, at first he wasn't interested, and I do like how they do this through more and more fights and more opponents that he, like wants to fight he starts getting into gundam and there's like an episode towards the end where he actually meets the protagonist's dad inadvertently and like 
the protagonist's dad, since he's trying to like promote Gundam, right? Uh, forces him to build a Gundam after uh, he was in the shop just, like, wanting to build a Gundam. So he get, he gets forced to build it, and he doesn't do terribly, but he's mm-hmm. still more of the combat side. And so, mm. anyway, just, like, that was a little off topic, but he fights, the fight between uh, Sam Reiji and Fellini is amazing, because their Gundams are breaking. It literally... Like, you get to see them go through their guns, their beam swords, and eventually it ends on them punching each other's fist. Like, they are they basically cross-counter each other. Punch, punching and, each other's... Oh, so they're playing bloody knuckles? Like, but they at don't that have point, blood? Yeah, at that point they're, like, just fucking kicking the shit out of each other with their fists and shit. And, like, it really did come down to... Uh, whose Gundam would at least, like, survive that. Hmm. Yeah, and, like, also the protagonist goes through different, like, Gundam models, and you get to see the evolution of this Gundam that he has. Because he starts off with, like, this proto-version called the Build Strike, but it doesn't, like, have all the features. It doesn't have any, uh... I don't... Yeah, it didn't have any guns. It didn't have the shield. It just had the beam sword. And then you see him go through, uh, like... You see him go through many battles with it, and then he's like, I need to upgrade this. So then he does the full package, which is, like, gun, shield, the beam swords, right? And then, eventually, he's like, shit, I'm actually, like, going into the world circuit. I'm gonna be fighting people who know how to manipulate the system so that things work in his favor. And he invents a system for his gunpla that allows him to absorb beam, uh, to absorb like uh, the shots fired from the beam guns, and use that as energy for either a massive like discharge in power that uh, has like an area of effect, a massive uh, laser gun, a, a massive laser gun blast, or a uh, just like basically uh, all for one from uh, My Hero Academia, where he just like powers up one part of the body and fucking goes. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And it, the weirdest, the last ability was revealed in the most epic baseball episode I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> no, straight up. Uh, so the tournament has the Gundams going through some weird stuff. And I'm like fine with that. I still think I would have rather battles, but hey, it... it changes pace so i'm good with that they have a baseball episode in which um the guy that we're fighting he didn't just like he wasn't just like a world-renowned build fighter he was also a part of a baseball team like a good baseball team and so uh the people who are running the tournament are like rigging it so that say and reiji have like a bad time baseball survives robot fighting Yep. We're still we're still watching that shit after Ro- we Come on guys. <laughs> I mean that is kind of funny that it's like you have like the most exciting form of entertainment no man and one of the most boring kinds of entertainment no man. Uh sorry grandpa. Um <laughs> Timmy, do you want do you want the do you want the 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 tiny robot that can do whatever you want and has a l- fucking laser sword? Uh, no, I think I want a bat. That is really, like, what the fuck, right? Come on, like, dude. But, but it's awesome because um, the base... It, they gave him the baseball and, like, gloves and even, like, a little hat for the Gundam <laughs> uh, because they weren't allowed to choose their weapons and got it through a lottery. They got a bad draw, and their opponent has a fucking club. And they're forced to play baseball, and if they don't at least get a strike, right, then they're out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, they go throw the ball with the system that they're revealing, right? And there's this just awesome three minutes of, like, the ball hitting the club and overpowering the, uh, well, not three minutes, but it's a, it's an extended sequence of the ball hitting the, uh, the club and just overpowering the Gundam. <laughs> it's got some ridiculous moments like that, but seriously... The fights, the legitimate fights in the show are amazing, and the models that they show off that uh, most of them you can actually, like, buy and build 
are awesome. And there are like a ton of tiny references, at least from what I know, there are a bunch of tiny references to other older Gundam series that people like mm-hmm. uh, that aren't like shoved in there. They're just like, oh shit, wait, is that like supposed to be like a, a mini Domon from G or something like that? It's really cool. And they really do play up how much, uh, you know, just building the kits and Gunpla are just like a thing that everybody can do, you know, just something for everyone. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. 100% check out Build Fighters. I don't know about the other series, but this one is great. And I also want to mention one thing. A, they're not in high school or a Gundam building club. There's like mention of it, but they're not in it. And second, no one, no main character jobs for anyone else. <laughs> there's, there's no like, oh man, these two main characters are going to fight each other. Oh fuck, the one we thought was strong lost. No, it's, they use all the like other contestants that don't matter to job for the main characters. It's good. It's good. Cool. Like, good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, it is my turn now. And I, uh, um, in my relentless search to, uh, find content, uh, for the podcast, um, I will, it's funny. I, I decided to, uh, brush out and an old game that I hadn't played in years and years and years. See, uh, there was this trend going on a while back on some of the Discord servers that I was on uh, called Game Squares, where we would just sort of like like select all of your uh, select kind of all your favorite game uh, video games, put them in like a neat, neat little visual, and like post it and be like, oh, did you play these games? Like, what do you think? Um, and so I'm, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm definitely not the biggest gamer in the GBG crew. <laughs> um... I play. I'm. I play what I want to play. Um. And uh. I when the game score thing. I wanted to make one, but I sort of had trouble kind of thinking of uh games that sort of like to like like enough games that could sort of hold that place for me. Um. But one of them that uh that uh, I remembered and added was Super Mario Galaxy, the first one. Um. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um. Mar- uh, Mario. Um, and so, uh, I decided, uh, and like, like I added that to the thing, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, huh, I haven't played this game in like forever. I wonder if it holds up. So I decided to brush, to, to brush off the, brush off the Wii U, um, pop that shit in there, use, using my, uh, actual, or like original Wiimote and fucking, like the original Wiimote nunchuck and sensor bar, which still works somehow since like 2006. Um, Dan, they, they, they definitely, uh, held that shit up. Um, I mean, obviously the Wii is the most cutting edge console with Just Dance releasing for it, mm-hmm. but, um, <laughs> but, you know, um, so I decided to play, uh, Super Mario Galaxy and I decided to take a challenge that I t- already tried to do once before. And that's finally, finally unlock Luigi by getting every single star, uh, in this game. And... Oh boy. Um, I haven't, I, I was, I really wanted to get it done by the end of a podcast. I'm, by like the time this, we recorded this, I'm so close now. <laughs> I only have like, I have like g- barely over, uh, like, like a little bit, like barely over 10 stars left to go. Um, I've beaten the main story. I've gotten every, uh, uh, uh every star except for the purple, all the purple coins ones, um, uh, which are hell on earth. And, uh, the person who invented purple coin levels in Mario uh, should drown. They should drown horribly because they suck. But the game is really good. <laughs> um, no, it's really like one of like the most like innovative Mario games ever. Um, I don't think Mario Odyssey would have been the um, the kind of like wide open, you know, platformer type thing that it was without uh, Galaxy going first. Um, we really, I mean, like for like most of like the Wii U's lifespan, they really focused on like the 3D world games, um, which are fun and they're fine for multiplayer, but they're ne- they- they're really not the best uh, single player experiences, which I- is what I feel a lot of um, Mario can be really fun when it is. Uh, that was an awkward phrasing of that. Um, Mario's really fun when it's multi, when it's uh, single player. Uh, and it's one of the best single player, uh, Mar- Mar- Mario Galaxy is one of the best single player Mario games uh, out there. Um, you just, you start off, you just go hop from planet to planet. Um, you just, 
collecting stars. It's like simple. It's pretty simple Mario Mario stuff. Except like the big what like the biggest gimmick of this game is the gravity mechanics are really wild. Um, because because it's not it's not just like a flat level. You're going to these planets, so you can you know jump and you'll get thrown this way and that way, and you can go all the way around. Yeah, um, this is one of those round Earth games. <laughs> not always. There are some flat Earths <laughs> in <laughs> Earth. Hollow Earth. No, no, there's fucking flat planets, hollow planets. There's planets in the shape of pills and boxes and zigzags and. There's no way there's not a planet in the shape of a dick in there. Oh yes, there is. There's also a planet that's just dead ass Yoshi's face. Uh, except he has this terrible zip problem, and he's covered with Goombas, and it's really weird. Uh-huh. Um, no, there's like there's there's pretty much any type of thing, uh, possibly imagine, and they're really really good at using, at introducing mechanics and then using them again later in more in like new and interesting ways. Um, that's one of the shining uh, examples about it. I mean. One of the parts, one of the most fondly remembered parts I can remember from playing the game as a kid was the, uh, was the ray surfing. Um, there's not enough of it. There's only like two levels, uh, with ray surfing in it. And it's really super fun where it's, you just, it's just, you kind of just like go around surfing, uh, on like this manta ray and it's super fun. Uh, and the game's just so charming. I gotta say, uh, the Toad Brigade is amazing. (laughs) Um, they're so fucking funny. It's like, you know how, like, Illumination is making a Mario? Yeah. Um, I would be fine. You know, you know what the movie, the Mario movie I want, to, I want to see is? Just a Toad Brigade Ocean's Eleven style heist movie. Because <laughs> those characters are so, it's like, they, you know, there's no voice acting. But just through, like, the written dialogue, they're so unique and funny and awesome. Captain Toad's just, like, like the main Toad. He's just, like, this sort of, like... Like, all guts ahead. I'm, like, the super awesome badass explorer guy. Oh, wait, there's trouble. He's a toad, so he runs away uh, uh, screaming. And then there's the blue toad with the glasses who's, like, he's the more competent one who's, like, we should really be, like, he's, like, the smarts. He's the brains of the group. Um, there's the uh, there's the yellow there's the yellow t- um, who's, like, the fat late or, like, like, the big, like, tired, lazy one who eats a lot. Basically the Brad Pitt if this was still Ocean's Eleven. Um, I really want that movie. <laughs> um, um, then you have, uh, uh, the purple toad, who's like the male toad who gives you like messages and shit. Uh, and then there's, uh, and then there's the green toad who doesn't have a personality for most of the game until he realizes his whole thing is that he helps build the ships and he makes cannons. He's the demolitions guy. There's literally a bit where he's building a cannon to shoot things and he's singing about how awesome it is. It's like, where the fuck did this psychopath come from? I love him. Um, no, they're all like, th- th- their comedy is like really good, even though it's not used a ton because there's no voice acting. I love them. They're awesome. Um, Luigi's in it briefly, and it's like sort of like really fun in like the single player where basically uh, Luigi tries to go, like, you know, you rescue him from like the ghost house and one of the later levels, and then he can go and find stars for you. Um, but he always gets caught in, in these bad situations because he doesn't, he, he didn't know how to handle them. It's, it's really funny. Um, more sort of basing on his, similar to his, like, like, like Luigi's Mansion, like, version where he's just kind of like this earnest, well-meaning, wants to do the right thing, but scaredy cat character. Um, Luigi would absolutely be on the team in this, uh, on the team in this Ocean's Eleven movie that I'm totally making happen. Um, uh, but yeah, uh. I mean, the obviously this was the big, the first game that introduced uh, uh, Rosalina, um, who's this really interesting uh, character. She has this whole backstory that if you, you know, the further you progress in the game, you can go into the library and hear her tell the story about a girl who is her. Um, uh, they don't like outwardly say that until later that it's her story, but it's it, it's pretty obvious that it's her. Um, uh yeah and it's done in this kind of like storybook kind of uh kind of way uh it's no it's it's really uh it's really it's re- really special it's a really special uh fun game um uh and i just have to say um i'll, I'll just like give you like the two like extremes of levels uh the best level in the game and the worst level in the game um, the best like galaxy. Uh, the best galaxy in the game is the Beach Bowl Galaxy because it's fun as fuck. You don't have to do. And you just go to the beach. There's swings. You swim around. You don't even have to do. I swear to God, 
I when I realized we were getting back to the Beach Bowl Galaxy, and I realized that this is just a level that you could dick around with, I sat down, didn't get the star for like two hours, and just like listen to relaxing videos in with earbuds while playing this level and just just relaxed it's such a nice place i didn't know what my happy place was but now i know it's the beach ball galaxy from super mario galaxy <laughs> um it's just like it's so like nice it's like sunny and cool you can jump off swings and like there's secrets uh and nothing there's like barely any enemies there so Nothing can hurt you. You're just safe in your little bubble and you're swimming around and it's fun. Um, that being said, the rolling gizmo galaxy can go fuck itself. God, that sucked. It's like the, you might remember from playing uh, some of the early levels. Basically, if you collect these three green, special green stars, you get, you unlock this, uh, these special trial galaxies, which have these um, sort of like expanded uh like sort of tougher versions of some of the early like like challenges and mechanics that were introduced in some of the other levels. one of them is the ray surfing level which is um the other one is like the, the another one is the uh is like the bubble the bubble riding one where you just kind of like you point the the Wii mode at the at the sensor bar and just kind of like blast air to push mario around in this little bubble um and uh and then there's the rolling gizmo galaxy which is the ball rolling one, which I died upwards of uh, 45 times on uh, because it's not fun. It's mm -hmm. bad. It hurts me soulfully and internally. Um, it's... And, 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 and here's what I'll say. Uh, this, a lot, I enjoy a lot of this. Uh, I think one of the biggest flaws with the game is, my God, I did not realize when I played how bad that fucking camera is because it's it's terrible um you don't have full control over it um at all times and like especially in a lot of the swimming levels where you're you know you're not just going forward and backward and like up and around there's a lot of like 3d space involved in this game because of the the gravity aspects of it but especially in the swimming levels um it like the camera will just like decide that it thinks like whatever's like directly behind you was more interesting uh than what than like the like the enemy you're about to run into um and uh the camera sucks uh uh most of the time it's fine but like there are just like some areas of it where it really really gets uh where it really really gets annoying um those are sort of like the only big kind of like negative things i have to say about the game um uh i died more times than i would care to admit i'm definitely way better at it than i was when i was a kid when i got like I got owned by Dino Piranha for like four months after I got the game because I couldn't figure out how to fucking work, make the game work. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it, little Carol was an idiot. Um, I mean, I'm still an idiot. Uh, uh, I get stuck on bosses a lot in video games. Um, but no. Um, Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, good game. Fun game. Uh, soundtrack's good. Play it <laughs> if oh, you yeah. haven't already. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you probably have, but if you didn't, do it. Y'all know, y'all hear about this Mario shit? Kinda fun. Hmm, don't know about, don't know if I'd say that. That's it for this episode of the Geeks by Gaslight podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Special thanks to our producers, Dre Bist, R Ronnie Diaz, and Scott Heemster for making this possible. Thanks to our lead editor, Guthrie Schooner, and thank you to Jack Warnerberg for helping us design the thumbnail. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and check out all of our great Comic-Con coverage that we did this month. Uh, follow us on Twitter and join our Discord. The link will be down in the description below. And be sure to keep it locked right here for brand new episodes of the GBG uh, podcast every single goddamn month. But until then, take it easy, nerds.